Thanks so much for watching today. Welcome back. We have another cool set of announcements for you. So I'm here with Aaron, George, and Alan. Uh, they are all working on different kind of compute primitives within the AWS ecosystem. So I'm going to let you tell them, let you guys tell them uh, about what you're working on and about what you've announced last night and what you guys are announcing now and uh, some other cool stuff. So let's start over here. You work on bare metal, right? That's correct. So w tell me about yourself and then uh, uh, what your role is at Amazon and then also l let me know kind of uh, the down low on how bare metal has become a thing at AWS. Sure. So um, I've, I've been at AWS uh, only for a few months, um, but uh, I, was, I was brought in, my, well, I have a background in hardware and, and hypervisor development. And that's what I've been doing about for the, about the last uh, 10 years or so. And um, I was brought in because I had an expertise in the uh, VMware Cloud on AWS offering. And the VMware Cloud on AWS offering was built on, on uh, bare metal, right? So we were testing it and developing it. We were, we were looking around at uh, customer use cases. It was like, you know, people that needed uh, VT extensions for, for secure, secure containers, for instance, or a bring your own hypervisor use case, or legacy applications that, uh, that needed to, uh, for compliance purposes or licensing requirements, run on bare metal. And at the time, you know, Amazon spent a, spent a couple of years developing the Nitro system that, that you heard about uh, in uh, Peter's talk and again in, uh, in and those, uh, all of that, that that was going on uh, culminated in a bare metal instance, allowing uh, customers to, 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 run, uh, to run on bare metal. And the first, the first thing we're introducing and bringing to market is the i3, uh, i3.metal, which uh, is, in, is in preview today. We're, uh, we're really excited about that. We've had a huge uh, response already. Uh, customers are signing up on the forum and uh, putting in requests and telling us about their use cases. So, so we're really excited about so that. So I, I think Andy mentioned in his keynote that it was, or, or I guess it was Peter DeSantis' keynote right. uh, on Tuesday night. He said that it was somewhat based on KVM, but that we had just completely redone it and. Oh yeah, the, the, so that's the that's the Brimstone hypervisor. Brimstone. So bare metal actually doesn't have a hypervisor in at it all. at all. Okay. Right. So so we're we're putting, so you have C5, which is running, a, which is a new instance type that we released recently that has the the Brimstone hypervisor, which is based on K KVM. And I say that it's based on KVM, right? Because we've it's done loosely. tons of work. Right, exactly. We've done work on it. Um, and, uh, and then you have the bare metal instance, which has no hypervisor in it between the compute and the installation at all. So customers can install you know, their Linux or their Microsoft uh, operating systems or their hypervisor right on the, right on the bare metal instance. Awesome. So that's, that's one end of our compute spectrum, kind of on like the, the far side of when you need absolute stellar performance and control over your system. Right. This is something that you would want to provision. Exactly. So on the complete other side, we have LightSail. Right. Uh, and so if you're not familiar with AWS or if you're a new developer, somebody trying to learn and get started with projects, LightSail is one of the best ways to do this. And Rather than me telling you about it, I'm going to let you kind of give us the, the elevator pitch for light pitch. Sure, light thanks, sales. Randall. Um, so we're doubly excited today because we're both launching a feature, but also because uh, light sale is becoming one year old tomorrow. We Happy launched, birthday. Uh, thanks. Uh, we launched uh, one year ago at reInvent uh, at Andy's keynote. Um, and we have the mission to make it easy for customers to get started with AWS, whether that's uh, for uh, <coughs> new developers getting started with the cloud or even with experienced developers really trying to get stuff done quickly. Um, Lightsail, Lightsail is a service that allows them to not only get started and deploy the resources, but also manage them long term. Uh, so we've been working on that mission since last year when, we've, when we first launched, uh, and we've been continuously listening to our thousands of customers and getting the feedback on what we should do next. Uh, we did a number of things during the year that I'd love to talk about, but the, the one that I'm here to talk about really today is the, the latest addition to the uh, light sale feature, which is light sale load balancing. So you guys are announcing light sale load balancing. Right, today we're, allowed, uh, we're announcing light sale load balancing and um, uh, you can actually start using it now. It's already live Way uh, cool. secretly. <laughs> um, so with light sale load balancing, like with uh, AWS load balancing, you can, uh, you can build now more highly available applications, you can scale your applications and your uh, websites a lot easier, but what's also really useful and cool, we think, is that we, you, can, you can actually uh, provision free uh, certificates which allow you 
to uh, build HTTPS applications uh, for free uh, on, on, on Lightsail. So, so this makes integrating with other APIs uh, drastically easier, right? Because now you can host your callback, you have HTTPS, you have TL TLS built in. Uh, and is that provisioned through an integration with uh, a certificate manager or? So that's, uh, uh, it, it does use a lot of the AWS infrastructure on the background to provide you these, uh, these uh, capabilities, but it's wholly contained within the Lightsail uh, uh, service and console, so you never have to leave that nice, easy UX environment. You can keep doing everything you're doing within Lightsail. That's really uh, cool. Connect it up to your Lightsail instances and uh, get going with your, um, with, with your highly available and scalable applications now, and also secure. Uh, and the, the, the last thing that I do want to talk about is the, the price. Uh, we think that we, we always try to uh, strive for making things simple and predictable, especially in pricing Lightsail. So the load balancing price is at $18 for a month priced hourly as almost uh, AWS resources, and that's flat, no overage, is nothing to worry about. How much, uh, maybe this is an appropriate question, <laughs> but how much bandwidth do I get with that? So the bandwidth, uh, Lightsail offers bandwidth on the instance level, so that doesn't change. You still get, for example, with your $5 server, you get a terabyte of ah, free in the basket. So yeah, uh, you can still keep uh, taking advantage of these uh, Lightsail uh, features with load balance. That's really cool. And also, I, I want to note that Route 53 recently launched a capability that allows you to automatically verify a certificate via DNS. So rather than having to respond to an email or, or some other form of, of verification of the domain, you can now just have it happen automatically within AWS. I don't know if you guys are using that or... You bet. Uh, uh, okay. So you can, you can do DNS validation of your search directly into Lightsail by creating a simple CNAME record on your, on, on your DNS. So you don't have to have email set up and you know, like many times our customers don't have the email right. set up. So that's a lot easier and you can do it within the AWS context, the console, no need to leave. Uh, pretty cool. So think. one of my favorite things about Lightsail is I, I go to a lot of hackathons in my role at AWS where I speak with a bunch of different students who may or may not be familiar with you know, all of AWS. And sometimes when you launch into this console, it can be a little confusing as a first time user because you have to see all the suite of services. And Lightsail takes that and pairs it down into something that's really easy to pick up and understand and get started on everything from a hobby project all the way to a startup. And then you can easily and gracefully migrate into AWS as needed once you've kind of built that you know, infrastructure knowledge up. I, I agree 100%. That's what really sets Lightsail apart. Uh, the fact that you have a simple offering, you can get started quickly, but you have the extendability of the, uh, the full AWS platform uh, so tomorrow you want to use some machine learning service, you want to use Lambda, you want to use uh, Dynamo, that you can just hook it up and get going. So it's, you know. That's way cool. We have a question from the stream from ABOM TV, uh, which is kind of a deep dive into how the load balancer actually works, which is, does Lightsail load balancing implement the same underlying infrastructure uh, as ELB or ALB? And you know, does it automatically provision two instances, or, or is it a set number of instances? How does that so, work? Uh, <coughs> In the uh, EC2 world, you'd probably have to set up your load balancer, whether that's a, you know, an ALB, an ELB, or uh, whatever you choose it to be, and then set up probably an auto-scaling group so that uh, your, your, your application ha can scale automatically. In Lightsail, we don't have the automatic scaling of auto-scaling, at least yet, uh, but we'd love to hear more about how you would use that and, um, and, and maybe work on it. This is something that we've been doing throughout the year, for example, in in the last three months, we've been adding a lot of uh, a, a lot of new features by listening to this to our customers and what they're asking for. But yes, on Lightsail today, you would set up your uh, load balancer that would look mostly like what you would be used to as ALB if you want to compare it to the EC2 world. Uh, but you'd have to kind of add your instances uh, yourself when you think that you're uh, getting you know that extra traffic or you know uh, you do you do get the the health checks that you would get in normal load balancing, ALB for example, uh, and you do get the, the normal search validation. And, yeah. That's way cool. You know, when you talk about load balancing and, and auto scaling and things like that, it kind of brings me into a segue with uh, our next speaker, who is going to tell us about two new launches that, two new, I think my audio may have dropped, mm. about two new launches uh, from the EC2 kind of control plane, which sure. are, yeah, so we have two new features that we've at, we are announcing today, or we just announced a little bit before. 
Um, we announced a new feature called Launch Templates and Spread Placement. Um, so Launch Templates are a new capability that let you templatize your launch requests across the various EC2 launch vehicles. So uh, with a single template, you can launch uh, or create auto-scaling groups, spot fleets, uh, on-demand instances, as well as spot instances. Um, so this provides a really consistent, easy-to-use uh, way or mechanism for defining your instances. Um, you know, we think this could be really helpful for customers to help implement uh, best practices and standards. Uh, it, it also helps uh, simplify the, the security model for launches as well. So uh, by providing access to defining a single template, providing access to that template, users automatically inherit uh, the ability to launch any kind of resource that's contained within that template. So is that given through IAM kind of granular permissions? You can say these templates are off to this role or this user? That's correct. So you can, oh, that's on cool. a per user basis, specify which instances or which templates, excuse me, they can launch from. Uh, and then those permissions will govern basically everything inside the template, so you don't have to figure out all the particulars, but you can also encapsulate all of that and be able to delegate that very easily to uh, users in the organization as well. And do these launch, do they have, you know, I, I, I'm not super familiar with it yet because I haven't had the opportunity sure. to use it, unfortunately, but I'm definitely going to check it out immediately after this stream. Mm -hmm. Do they have ARNs, the, um, the, the launch templates and the... Yeah, they do. So. Uh, Launch templates are themselves are they do have ARNs. They're uh, something they can therefore be permissioned on their own as well. And are they uh, taggable as well? And I was just going to say as well that means they're going to be taggable. So I think that's a really cool uh, point where we could integrate with Systems Manager and kind of bring all of that together and make it way easier for users to maybe federated users, right? People coming in over SAML or or, or some form of OAuth or something like that, federated logins. You know, they could go in and they could have access to permissions solely within their kind of realm of expertise or their realm or their department. And it, it was a good way to segment accounts. And so this can launch, uh, you know, what does it look like in terms of uh, setup? Is it is it a JSON language? Is it an API call? How, how does it all go down? Um, yeah, it's all of those. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the, so the way you create them, uh, you can create them through the API and CLI as well as the console. Um, the console experience is much like uh, creating an instance. You basically uh, specify the different parameters that you want, and behind the scenes, we go ahead and convert that into JSON and, and ultimately a launch template for you. Um, if through the API as well, you can uh, natively create and construct your own JSON and, and submit that to the API. Uh, we also have the ability for you to create a launch template from an existing instance, so you can point uh, us at a, an existing instance, and we'll automatically generate a launch template for you. Um, so there's lots of different ways that, that you can flexibly create these. So we have a question from the stream from some dev, which is a great name and describes <laughs> me. Um, so they want to know what, the, what are the costs associated with uh, launch templates? Yeah, so there are no costs for launch templates. Um, you know, we just wanted to make it really easy and simple for you to use the different resources you need in EC2. So you still obviously pay for the resources like uh, instances and whatnot, but uh, there's no specific cost or charge for uh, launch templates. I am also some dev, so I want to ask a question. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so, Alan, I know from my personal projects that sometimes you want to update your army, but you don't want to go and build everything from the scratch. You know, yeah. is there any versioning capability, something that I can use in order to keep like a history as well? Yeah, it's a great question. So, yes, yeah, so that was one of the things we wanted to solve, especially sort of with our integration with uh, auto scaling and Spot Fleet, is we have the ability for you to create versions within a single template. So, for example, if you patch an AMI on a regular basis, you can update the right. template with just the new AMI ID. And then, for example, when you register this launch template with a auto scaling group, you can um, specify that you want to pin this auto scaling group to what we call the default version within uh, within a launch template, and you can actually change it on the fly. So um, that way, you don't have to actually create new templates or, or update your auto scaling groups. All Every you have to do is you centrally do that from the launch template That's usually important. That's and that really with one click, you can really roll out uh, changes to your launch template across the different places that you're actually launching um, yeah. instances. And is this available now in, in all regions that have EC2? Uh, that's correct. It's available now. Um, so you can go and use it within any of the regions that uh, offer EC2. As a former uh, GovCloud user, <laughs> I, I have to ask, also in GovCloud? Uh, I believe it. Uh, is coming in GovCloud real soon. I'm excited about that. I, I used to work at uh, SpaceX, and I'm sure yep. they would love to have this kind of functionality. Yep. It would kind of like save them a lot of time. Yep. So uh, you also are launching um, spread placement, That's right? right? So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, spread pla placement is a new capability. Um, for those of you familiar, we already have placement groups. Uh, today we have a 
what we call cluster placement groups, which help you get uh, low latency networking capabilities for uh, various instances that are part of a common workload. Uh, in a similar vein, we have now spread placement groups, uh, where you create a group of instances that allow you to push those, in, make sure those instances are going to be on distinct hardware so that you can help uh, mitigate uh, any uh, possibility of correlated failure. So um, this way, if you have, uh, let's say for example, a database cluster uh, where you've sharded various uh, aspects of your, your workload, um, a single, let's say, hardware failure wouldn't impact uh, distinct uh, portions of that charting. So, and how does that actually look in terms of the API, in terms of the setup? Is it you know across availability zones within a single availability zone? Or do you specify right. some document that gives those preferences? Or yeah, so the the usage model is is very similar to the way we do uh, cluster placement groups today. So you create a uh, placement group. It is uh, it, it, placement groups in and of themselves don't have availability zones or specific sort of locations that they're tied to. Uh, and then with spread placement groups, you can launch across any AZ within the region where you've created that, uh, that placement group. And then you can have up to seven instances in each availability zone running within a placement group at any given point in time. Um, and uh, yeah, and so uh, it, it really works across uh, a whole region, making it really easy to have these large scale, very stateful workloads uh, region wide. That's really interesting. And are there any charges for spread? Uh, like like launch templates, there's no specific charge for spread placement groups themselves. There's just the, the existing underlying services. Yeah. So no additional charges. Wow. Th these are really cool launches, and they're across a whole spectrum of compute. And I think that's something that appeals to me, mm -hmm. because I've been a beginning developer. I'm somewhat of a mil middling developer at this point. And it's kind of cool to see this growth uh, of AWS. Or it's expanding in all directions, and not just, you know, adding features for enterprise, adding features for new users. We're trying to give everybody the tools they need to be successful. And mm -hmm. I wanted to thank you guys for working so hard on that. Uh, each customer segment that you guys serve is it's just vital to our business. So uh, are there any closing thoughts on Bare Metal or Lightsail or, or EC2 that you guys would like to share? We're just, we're really excited about uh, having it out there. We're really excited about having people try it out, tell us how they're going to use it. We have the thoughts on how they're going to use it, or, Always excited to see how you know what uh, what our customers build with our products. Yeah, we've been working on a number of features. Can you hear me? Okay. We've been working hard on a number of features lately, including Windows instances and block storage and block storage and uh, a number of things. And I want to call to our customers to not only try them but also reach out to us about what they want to see next and also what what their, their feedback is on the current features. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to sort of mirror what Aaron said. Uh, you know, really excited about getting these features out to customers and. Uh, really looking forward to the feedback and seeing how our customers are using them and seeing how we can continue to improve and invest in, in these areas as well. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to come here today. Thank you guys. We are going to be back in just one minute. Uh, stay tuned. Don't go away.